All right, my name is Joel Moffat. I'm the Customer Experience Lead and Principal Product Manager for the Accessibility Team at Comcast. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit about Comcast's approach to empowering people with disabilities through technologies like the voice remote. I'm going to take you through some demonstrations of how that works on our excellent operating system. And I'll tell you a little bit about me personally. Uh, there is a car crash. There's an underground adventure. So hang in there. We'll get to the good stuff. <laughs> All right. So the way I kind of think about accessibility, about empowering people with disabilities, is through this tagline we kind of use internally, which is awesome for all. We want to deliver experiences for our customers that are going to empower them regardless of their level of ability, right? Because honestly, having a disability isn't really about a lack of ability. It's really about a lack of a solution. It's our designs that disable us. And as long as we have the right tools to overcome our disabilities, or not even necessarily overcome them, but just live productively with them, we can deliver those great experiences for everyone. I'll use my personal story in just a moment to, to talk about that a little bit. But I think we've, we're all starting to experience that more uh, with the rise of voice, whether it's on your smartphone, whether it's on Xfinity X1. Uh, I know I've sat there at my desk and dictated an email into the email app on my phone, although I'm sitting right at my laptop that I can't dictate into. So the landscape is really shifting. It's great to see people taking such advantage of voice. I've already learned a lot being here today. Appreciate all the presentations. So Awesome for All is really about empowering our customers with disabilities. So at Comcast, our, our role, we're within technology and product experience. So our accessibility team, we're product owners. We're working with other product owners across the business, across our lines of business to ensure that we're designing and developing with accessibility in mind. So when that product reaches the hands of a customer with a disability, be it a sensory disability, a cognitive disability, a physical disability, you name it, uh, they're gonna have a great experience right out of the box and we're gonna really level that playing field. So I just have our quick mission up here is to drive uh, inclusive experiences and empower and delight customers to all abilities through world-class entertainment, uh, communications, and smart home experiences. And our charter is really to kind of uh, drive customer experience, first and foremost, you know, from end to end, um, again, designing and developing with accessibility in mind and providing support with accessibility in mind. Uh, accessibility infrastructure is really things like our accessibility lab uh, right downtown at the Comcast Center. I manage that lab. Um, I also kind of manage the um, interaction with a lot of national disability organizations. So as we design and develop products and experiences, we want to make sure that we're considering the perspectives of people with disabilities and having them test products and prototypes early and often. And then lastly, of course, is product capabilities. We want to deliver products that have those capabilities like voice to, uh, to give people those great experiences. All right, I promise we can get to a car crash. So uh, unfortunately, this was my car. Actually, my parents' minivan. Every teenager wants to drive around in a minivan, right? <laughs> So this was actually the beginning of a journey for me, uh, as well as the end of that particular journey, apparently. Uh, I did total that car. Uh, this is before I knew that I had a disease called Usher syndrome, which is slowly taking my vision. Nothing I can do about it, not preventable, not curable, um, but it's a very slow progression. So I you know, learned very slowly to live with my, with my vision as it, as it progresses. So, at this time, I had no idea that I had a disability, but um, I wrecked the car, and that started my journey to finding out about my disability and starting to learn about assistive technology and learn about the ways I could get involved. So that was about 20 years ago. Fast forward a couple of years, when I was in college, I had the opportunity to study abroad. Uh, met a good friend of mine who was also at Penn State with me. Uh, he's on the left there, it's me on the right. The, uh, the beard seems like a good idea at the time. <laughs> So on the left is my good friend Rob Lang. He eventually became my roommate here back in Philadelphia. Um, really great friend of mine. Uh, and one of the reasons we became such good friends is because he seemed to innately understand when he should try to help me out and when he should leave me alone and respect my independence. He just kind of knew. And when you're grappling with losing your vision and traveling around Europe, um, 
even though you feel invincible at that age, um, it's good to have somebody like that in your corner. So we got along really well. And when we reached uh, Budapest in Hungary, he said to me, let's go caving. I didn't like that idea for a lot of reasons, because it's caving, and because underground, it's pitch dark. And I can't see in the dark very well at all. And I really need this cane when I'm in the dark. So I kind of hedged a little bit. And Rob said to me, look, when you're underground, everybody is blind. I couldn't argue with that, really. So we put our lives in the hands of this person in the hospital who took us out in the hills. And we went caving. And the headlamps that you see in this picture were really the leveler of the playing field. That was the assistive technology. That's all everybody had to work with, was this little beam of light that I was benefiting from and they were benefiting from too. So now we went underground. Um, my reasons for never wanting to go caving again have very little to do with my disability and a lot to do with situations like this. Yeah, there's Rob in a feature called The Sandwich, about 30 yards of crawling on your belly while your helmet gets wedged between these two slabs of rock. It was, it was terrifying. It was awful. I hated every minute of it. <laughs> but I did it. And that's the key point here, is that the technology and the will to succeed and try something is what, what drove me through this. So, uh, you know, a headlamp and a good friend might not seem like the most innovative pieces of technology. They were really my first brush of leveling the playing field for myself and knowing how it can be leveled for others. So after this, after college, I went into uh, an independent living center. I wrote grants. I was a marketing communications guy. And fast forward a little bit, I landed about six years ago at Comcast as part of our accessibility team. So, uh, I'm going to talk about inclusive design a little bit. So that's really important to our team, it's really important to Comcast. That's where you might be designing with one population in mind. Maybe we're designing a, uh, um, a product and thinking about one population, but if we design with accessibility in mind, we're going to get a great experience for everybody. Think about that voice remote that's become so commonplace for so many of us. It's just cool stuff for everybody. But really that line between accessible stuff and cool stuff is blurring. And the voice remote is a great instance of that. So inclusive design, you can see in the image there, I've got things like at the bottom left, there you've got one of the first typewriters. Uh, that was invented by Pellegrino Turi in the 1800s to assist his blind lover so that she could write him letters. Uh, the telephone, that was, you may not know, invented to help Alexander Graham Bell uh, further some of his work with the deaf community. Uh, you've got some other things in the picture there, like a bicycle using a curb cut. You know, curb cuts, those old ramps in the curb, haven't always been around. Imagine when they weren't around what you would do if you were in a wheelchair. You'd go half a block down and find a driveway. You'd cross in the middle of a busy street to the other side and try to find another driveway that had a curb cut to get back up to the, the sidewalk. So curb cuts are a great example of inclusive design where you're designing with one population in mind but you're coming out with a great experience for everybody. That's what we try to do at Comcast and that's what the, uh, the voice remote has particularly succeeded at. So up on the screen here, I've got a young man named Logan, and there's a tweet here. Um, it says, this is Logan, a child with autism, who loves his Comcast X1 remote. Formerly nonverbal, his mother, Gail, loves that Logan wakes up and works on speech using the X1 voice remote. So this is an example of accessibility coming about in a really unexpected way. So Logan uses this remote um, because he he really directly sees the cause and effect between his speech and what happens on the TV. So I'm going to let this quick video speak for itself and we'll get introduced to Logan here. At Sweet Bay Magnolia Academy in Annapolis, Maryland, Logan and other kids play. Gail Rand, Logan's mom. My eight-year-old son, Logan, has autism, has epilepsy, has ADHD. He's very high energy and very funny and is a super fun, amazing kid. He reads an alphabet card. Logan has historically had a lot of challenges with his behavior. He was nonverbal for many years. In the past year and a half since he started school, he's just blossomed. Um, you really start to see his personality that you didn't see much of before. He's learning a lot at every moment. He strikes rhythm sticks together. He loves people. He has trouble sometimes communicating to people, but he does love people. He likes making other people laugh, and he enjoys when they make him laugh. He joins a half dozen kids in a music class. At home, he presses buttons on a TV remote. Logan started playing with the voice remote before I knew the voice option existed on the remote. He figured it out himself. Playing little Einstein. He 
likes to talk and make things happen. So the fact that he could push a button, in this case, I think the first time he used it was he wanted to play Little Einstein. Little Einstein. He said Little Einsteins and the TV itself reacted. That was a fantastic reinforcement of him communicating. Shark Tank. Episodes appear on the TV. Logan selects one to watch. Outside, he throws a basketball into a net. Logan very much so responds to cause and effect. So he likes the idea that when he does something, it gets a reaction. There's an old saying that you meet one kid with autism, you've met one kid with autism. So it's hard to predict how different kids would use technology in different ways. Having a tool that he's communicating with in a way that is helpful for his learning is remarkable. A logo appears, Comcast. So Logan's just one example of the voice remote empowering somebody in a new and bold way. Uh, other examples include on the left here, uh, think about somebody who's blind, like the gentleman on the left in the, the slide here. Think about what the voice remote means to them being able to rely on the voice button and not have to thumb around and try to find the channel number buttons. Or just use the voice remote to tune right to a channel. Um, use the voice remote to find exactly what you want to watch, when you want to watch it. So again, cool stuff for everybody, but particularly impactful for somebody maybe who's blind. Or somebody like the gentleman on the right who's got very severe arthritis and can't press a lot of the buttons on the remote. But he can rely on that voice control button to find his favorite shows uh, whenever he wants to watch them. So, you know, the pattern you're seeing here is there's a broad swath of people. I mean, disability cuts across all demographics, really. You know, one in three households has a disability. 48% of those households uh, have a person with a disability as the head of a household. The disability community represents $200 billion in discretionary spending. And 29% of Americans are caregivers, people who care for and care about people with disabilities. That's 65 million people. So it's not just people with disabilities that we're empowering through this technology. It's the whole household. We're, we're restoring quality of life where somebody's less reliant on a family member or a caregiver to say, hey, you know, can you put on the news for me? And then that other person is taking control of the remote. Right? So that's some of what the voice remote does. And not just for people with disabilities. Um, in the center there, those three little girls are mine. So at the top there, we've got Charlotte, and then Clara in the middle, and Christina at the bottom. So they're, they're seven, six, and three. Uh, the upper two, they're, they're getting to read pretty well, but um, the voice remote still helps them to get where they want to go. I'll tell you about voice guidance in a minute. That's basically voice out. It's going to talk you through the menus. And even little Christina there is you know, saying kid zone and saying super wide. And I, I'm in the kitchen, I hear her doing that, and she's getting where she needs to go. So it's, it's a new world as far as TV goes. They have everything on demand and they have technology to get to it. Uh, we've had, even had examples that you know, Janine showed us the, the voice, the X1 um, voice remote app. And I remember when I started at the company that was rolling out and we had a customer who was using that. The only way this customer could use it was by touching the iPhone with his nose or with his tongue to activate the voice and that's how he would watch TV. So, and this is several years ago, so we've, we've come a long way. So, we're talking about voice control, obviously, and I'm gonna tell you how that pairs up with what I just mentioned, which is voice out. That's our voice guidance uh, feature on X1. So that's where on-screen menu options and items are spoken aloud to help people who are blind navigate through screens, or people with cognitive disabilities, people who speak English as a second language, again, my kids, and so on. So really affecting uh, a lot of people. And then lastly, video description, which is narrated content. So see, these are the three ways that I see voice playing out right now today in X1. Obviously, we're, we're you know, looking at new innovations as well, but looking at X1 listening, X1 talking, and then finding that narrated content. So to use somebody who's blind as an example, how would somebody who's blind sit down on the couch, pick up the remote, and find what they want to watch when they want to watch and not have to rely on somebody else? So independence is really the key. So I'm going to do a quick demo, a quick can demo here of X1 and the accessibility voice control features that we have, as well as the other features that I'm telling you about right now. Accessibility. So just by saying that quick command, accessibility, into the voice remote, um, and this is a screen you're seeing, 
will be going live pretty soon. This is uh, what we're kind of calling our accessibility dashboard, where you've got your accessibility settings, accessibility tips, uh, things like turning closed captions on and on quickly, and then in that second row you see some accessibility content. So you've got a collection of shows that have video description, and if you don't know what video description is, that's basically a secondary audio program that adds a narrator to certain content. You actually heard video description in action on that, lo um, that video about Logan, where it said, you know, he joins some kids in a music circle and then back at home he plays with buttons on the remote. That's video description so that someone who's blind can know what's happening on the screen. So we've got other collections there, including accessibility awareness content, so that's movies and shows about disability. And then we've got Autism Awareness, which is kind of the same thing for, for Autism Awareness Month as well. So now, once I'm in this menu, I can just hit OK, or I can even just press the B key on the remote or say Accessibility Settings and get to this menu. Once I dig in here, you'll see all in one menu, I've got all my closed captioning options. Closed captioning options, uh, video description, voice guidance, uh, voice guidance options, enhanced text readability to make the font size of the guide bigger, and a new thing that we're calling remote shortcut where you can press B twice on the remote and turn on voice guidance, or you can set B twice on the remote to close captions or video description. So really changing the game, making it very easy for people to get to all of their accessibility settings in one spot. And even better, we also have dedicated voice commands for each accessibility feature. So I can go ahead and say voice guidance and turn on voice guidance. I'll show you how that works. Voice guidance. Voice guidance. Here on screen text and options spoken aloud to help you navigate through screens. Press right arrow button and OK to activate. Turn on voice guidance. Voice guidance on. Press the menu button to access the main menu. The menu button is a rectangular button located two rows above the OK button. So now we've got voice guidance activated. So wherever I go to navigate in the menu, it's going to tell me where I'm at so that somebody who's blind or cognitive disability and so on can, can navigate independently. Described shows. Video description. Described video airing today. So now I just say shows a description or describe show and I land on this collection of all the stuff that's described in one spot. That includes uh, stuff that's available on Xfinity, stuff that's available on Netflix as well. So you can arrow down and get to all the Netflix content in one spot. So we've got nearly a thousand programs you can get in here and watch. Um, from there, I can, you know, maybe I know exactly what I want to watch. I've already been watching it. I can do that. And what I'm going to show you here is a clip from the 2018 Paralympics in Pyeongchang, which were described for the first time live. So you can tune into them, into the coverage, and turn on the description. You can hear that narrator. Uh, talking to you live through what was happening in the different sports. So I'll show you a clip from the closing ceremonies in a second. So we're going to go to our last watch, like Janine mentioned. Last watched. Last watched. Press left or right arrow to review item. On now, Olympic Films. 2018 Winter Paralympics. Now playing 2018 Winter Paralympics. Closing ceremony. Side to side, their hands behind their backs. Now they march towards the circular stage, spreading out and filling the space. A woman plays a reed instrument similar to a small trumpet, has a wooden conical shaped body and a cup shaped metal belt on the end. She wears a light silk robe. So this is live, and she's describing it as it happens, which always impresses me. And it's super, super useful for somebody to the right line, of the stage, the another moving stage containing seven percussion. Of course, we work with the NBC side of our house to get this done to ensure that the uh, scripted video work will provide these subscribers to uh, watch the stream live. Play behind the woman playing the wind instrument. So if I leave you with one thing for our Xfinity customers and you have people in your lives with a disability who could benefit from these features, just remember all you've got to do is just say accessibility into the remote or press the B key. And then you can also learn more at Xfinity.com slash accessibility, all about our products, all about our support center for people with disabilities uh, and other things we have going on.
And then uh, if you want to get a hold of me, there's my, uh, my Twitter and my LinkedIn up on the screen there. So uh, I just want to thank you guys again for having me as part of this conference. It's uh, been something I've been really looking forward to, and uh, hope you guys enjoy the rest of it.